Hey, what up, everybody? My name is Stan Smith, and you are on the Iron Shark K9 training page. This page is to make it easier for you guys to live with your dogs. Jamil and I have done through a lot of experiences over our course of time working with dogs, and we just want to share those experiences with you guys. So today, we're specifically going to be talking about the heel command and actually getting into the heel position. I like to break up the heel walking and the heel position because I want the dog to understand exactly what is expected. And heel is a position. It means be at my left side, and when I am moving, you should move with me. And when I'm stationary, you should be stationary, seated in a control position. So we're gonna show you how to get that control. Yeah. All right, so a couple of things that I like to do is I like to keep the treats on the opposite side that the dog's gonna be on because I don't want the dog sniffing and trying to get the treats out of my pocket when I'm putting them on that left side. And another thing you wanna keep in mind, if you are right-handed, your dog needs to be on the opposite side. Just think about, if you're carrying your gun, you don't wanna pull out that gun and your dog's over here and now your dog gets shot. That's the worst thing in the world. So you want your dog on that opposite hand. And even if you're not carrying, say your dog's on that right side and you go to shake somebody's hand. Now your dog's gonna think they should move with you and they think they're gonna get greeted. So if your dog's on this side, when you step off with your right leg, you can shake that person's hand and your dog's still gonna be in that control position. We'll get to all of that here in a minute. So I like to use the lure method, getting the dog in there, and how you're gonna hold your treats is I like to put the treats in the palm of my hand right there. And I like to cover it with my thumb and put that dog's muzzle right in there. You see that? I'm giving him one or two treats, keeping him interested. Now he's paying attention, people. So what we're gonna do is swap it over to the left side. He was ready. And I'm gonna get it right in front of him. And what I wanna do is I wanna tell him heel. I'm gonna step back with my left leg, pull him back. Oop. Step back, come on. <laughs> if you don't want to do it, we're going to reset. Come back again, we'll tell him heal. Yes, and we're going to reward him when he's passing us. With the bigger dogs, you got to make sure they clean, they get all the way past you because they got to turn around. And if they don't turn or pass you all the way, when they go to turn, they're going to be out of position. And then we're all messed up already. So break it down clearly. So I'm going to do this three times in a row so the dog understands that he's getting something at that back end of this. You ready, takers? You ready, takers? So again, got that treat where I want it. I'm going to tell him heal, click, and reward. And that click is a clear marker in the dog's head that, oh, I did something right. I get my reward. So again, we'll do it one more time. We'll go heal. Good boy. Yeah. And then I like to give a dog a break. When we're working, after they do something, I'm going to give them that free command and let them just go kind of being a dog again. I like to associate it like kids in elementary school. You teach them something, they go to PE. You teach them something, they go to recess. You teach them something, they go to lunch. And they're going to comprehend and understand that a lot more than trying to just drill, 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 drill. Because the dog gets bored. You get bored, the dog starts messing up, you get frustrated, and now you lose your whole training session because you went too long. So keep these sessions short, clear, and make sure the dog understands exactly how to be successful. You ready? I know it's hot, Bubba. I know it's hot outside. He was outside for a little bit. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna tell him heal and not reward him here, bring my hand around, and then, boom. When he's in the position that I want him to be, I'm gonna reward it. And with a bigger dog, I want his shoulders kind of right by my knee. So when he does sit down, he's still going to be in position. If his head is only right by my knee, when the dog sits down, he's going to be behind you. And he's going to be out of position again. And we don't want that. You ready? You ready? So again, we'll go heel, around, and come on. Go, 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 go. There you go. Come on, you bum. And if he's cheating, we're not going to do it. You can't sit behind, you gotta be. There you go. So we'll go heel. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Yeah! Good job. That's so good. And you know we're doing another three count. You ready? Is you ready? Oh, yeah, yeah, that butter, that butter, boy. So heel. Yes, ah, good boy. Free, you. And again, he's gonna get that little break. Sniff around, I dropped a couple treats on it, let him go explore, 
And this is very important, people. You want your dog to understand that they have their time to be a dog. Because if you're always forcing them, if you're always making them do everything for you like military robot, when that door opens and they have an inch of freedom, they're going to take it. And I learned that the hard way, people. I had a dog run out the front door, and he ended up getting hit by a car because I didn't have any control or communication with this dog. So we're trying to keep you guys from ever having to experience any of that pain by losing a dog by something as simple as a lack of communication between you and that dog. So the third and final part is if you want to get him, you're going to tell him heal, bring him around, and you're going to raise your hand up. And when he sits, you're going to reward it. And again, I want that knee, his shoulders right by my knee. I want that shoulders right by my knee. That's going to be that proper position. And when he's in that position, I'm going to reward it. And if your dog doesn't sit automatically, you can tell him sit. Because you want to be clear about it. In the teaching phase, in the training phase, you want to make sure the dog knows exactly what is expected. It's very, very important, people. Don't give mixed signals to your dog. You ready? So, we're going to go heel, around, and up. Yes, sir. Good boy. Free. And also with that free command, I want to step away. I want to physically break away from that dog so he starts learning and understands that. That free command means you can get away from me. So, one more time for the road. He's sniffing around as soon as he pays me some attention. Tanker. Yeah. So, he came back. We're gonna reward that paying attention. Good boy, you ready? So, one, two, three, let's go. Heel, so back, forward, and up. Oh, it's not that boy. Yes, sir, that was so good, that was so good. Free. So, he understands that he needs to come and get in this position, and over the course of his training, he's gonna to continue to learn to get there without having to be lured. And this is just one method of getting your dog into the heel position. So you guys make sure you subscribe because there is another way to get your dog in the heel position. And to see that, check out these next videos. Y'all stay tuned and stay sharp, people. And I know, as always, take care of your dog. Yes, sir.